welcome back to the morning show here on the Rise News. I am Adesua Omoran. And I am Rafael Yosini. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm Shaito Atigari. Good morning. Now, after first being declared winner of the presidential election in February by a margin of nearly 4 million votes, the five-man panel presidential election petition tribunal led by Justice Mohammed Garba again affirmed that President Mohammed Buhari is the winner of the 2019 pres presidential election. Oh yes, the tribunal on Wednesday in a unanimous judgment dismissed a petition filed by the PDP and its candidates in the 2019 presidential election challenging the victory of President Mohamed Buhari in the February 23rd presidential elections. However, the People's Democratic Party, PDP, has rejected the verdict of the presidential election petition tribunal upholding President Buhari's victory at the 2019 election. According to the party's national publicity secretary, Kola Olobodio, the tribunal failed to point to justice despite the pieces of evidence laid before it by the PDP and its presidential candidate, Atiku Abubakar. Well, following these developments, the PDP stated that the verdict of the tribunal tribunal will be challenged at the Supreme Court. So joining us now from our Abuja studios is uh, Shegun Shoumi, is public affairs analyst and official spokesperson of the Atiku Presidential Campaign Organization. And also joining us from the same studio is Lanre Issa Onilu, the National Publicity Secretary of the ruling All Progressive Party, APC. Welcome, gentlemen. All right, uh, 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 Shegun Shoumi, are you, are you there? We do have uh, okay. our guests uh, yet to join us yeah. in our Abuja studios, and while we wait for them to just get seated, um, it's been almost 72 hours since that verdict came in from the uh, presidential elections tribunal. We are yet to hear from the candidate himself for the PDP, who is a petitioner, mm. uh, who instituted this petition against the All Progressives Congress. Um, I find that very um, appalling, maybe a certain level of disturbing. Maybe he While has the PDP been there. has issued statements, uh, the APC has also issued statements, the candidate has remained more. I, I, I think, uh, true to tell, cases like this and things like this, you definitely need time to be able to look at things and adjust and be able to make your decisions. I'm sure while the silence is on, uh, there's definitely conversations going on with a team of lawyers mm -hmm. because they need to be able to file that case within that time span. In the span, end, 21 you know, days that with, they with, have. Within that time frame, you know, to the Supreme Court. So that's what we're probably looking at now. But uh, you have, you know, surrogates of this, the PDP going out of town and they're hammering on one pressure point. I mean, I saw Kazim Fergboa today on another on channel uh, uh, talking really about the certificate issue and how they're going to try that out in the Supreme Court. And so some other areas like that. But we've not heard from Malaji to go back, like you said, rightly. Uh, but definitely, our legal team, the APC2 is talking to their legal team. And let's see if this will go to the Supreme Court. But let's not forget, yeah. yesterday, the governor of River State, Isam Wiki of the PDP, congratulated right. President Muhammad Buhari. A lot of people are saying, is this a cog in the wheel of the PDP? Are they yeah. throwing, you know, a sticks in the, the machinery of the PDP? But time will tell. Indeed, that has been a talking point. And I uh, guess that I remember our guest, who is who, who's a member of the People's Democratic Party, uh, was trying to wave that aside, uh, saying that the same allegations have been made against former governor of Ekiti State, uh, Ayodele Fawashi, okay. who withdrew the statement. However, we have seen that he has now reiterated that he made the comment. And he went ahead to add that this was heartfelt. And we'd rather congratulate the president in the open than go behind, behind his back to congratulate the, him. The back in, 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 the in, in, in fact, there's a backstory that an emergency meeting was held mm. yesterday based on that congratulation. Well, and the PDP has been talking in house based on, you know, the congratulation of Yusuf Wiki. All of uh, that we're about all to find that. out this yeah. morning. And we do hear that uh, Mr. Biodun Shomi has now joined us. Uh, in our Abuja studio. Uh, while we are getting settled in, some days yeah. can be like this technical issues, I, and, I, uh, I, and I, you have I, studios across. I, and, and, and in fact, uh, across towns. We, we should just say it real quickly uh, at this well, like, like, like you said, you know, before we come on, on to our guest, and like you said very rightly, if that wasn't a big issue, the, the governor of River State was saying in the papers this morning why he congratulated. And because a lot of people were trying to push it apart and say, oh, it's not a big issue. Some are saying mm. that to a large extent, it's going to be a conversation on who will 
you know, push the party as regards the Supreme Court? Who is going to help them? And they say Wike is a prominent factor. I mean, you want to come into this conversation? I mean, I feel no? like the biggest, the biggest issue for me here, and I can't wait to actually ask this uh, mm. question to, direct this question to Mr. Shomi, is really about the quality of the, the litigation. Because we have the PDB coming out to say that, oh, you know what, we had flawless evidence. The, the, the problem is with the tribunal. And they have, you know, only 21 days to make, you know, for a better defense. Do they still feel that their, their, their evidence is flawless? Or do they need to go back to the drawing board and look at how they can push forward their case to make sure that when they, but, but in fact, take it to the... To to new I mean... You don't get a chance to, to add new evidence. Kind of, so everything is all locked in already. It's so... So <laughs> it's, 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 it's really disturbing because you even have, you know, you have the instances where they're saying that, you know, this, they didn't mention the security operators. So can they still move forward no, and, do and, and do, it's do, it's do such that? A, it's such it's, a Herculean task. And, mm. you know, before all of this started, we, we had senior advocates, very senior lawyers in the country, who had said, you know, to prove irregularities in Nigeria's presidential election mm. is an uphill task. task for anybody. Yesterday, I listened to another senior lawyer, uh, senior advocate of Nigeria, uh, Robert Clark, Chief Robert Clark, mm. who said, unfortunately, the law is the law mm. so far. And the law, unfortunately, now... Uh, is on the side of the electoral body. In fact, you're, you're very spot on, uh, you know, the petitioner proving the case. And uh, when a lot of people say Herculean tax, we've never really broken it down that it is something Hercules will do. <laughs> <laughs> and the truth has to be said that <laughs> if it's an Herculean task, it's not even going to be easy for Hercules. Yes. And, and you saw that there yesterday. I mean, a very strong point, even when the PDP brought about a case of, oh, uh, security agents, you know, helping, you know, a certain political party and the likes. Quickly, the judges did say vicarious liability. Even if you have the evidence that could this person help this, this person, you cannot say it directly affected the outcome. You cannot hold the person that he was alleged that he helped liable for that. You also saw the point of the, the, the certificate, you know. You saw how the judges did say, you know what, yeah, and I'm going to be, we're going to be taking the guests on this, you know. Yeah. The judge did say, you know what, yeah. For the fact that he had gone through this, he had gone, and the military did say, you know, he had dropped this and he had submitted that and it's one of them. He's eminently qualified. Also, the case of their weaknesses. I mean, those are the cases we're going to be raising today. Mm, indeed. And, and, and the like, so... Yes, and now we are ready, and we are being joined by the National Publicity Secretary of the All Progressives Congress, APC, Mr. Larry Issa Onilu, and, of course, Mr. Shegun Shomi, uh, the spokesperson of the presidential candidate of the People's Democratic Party in the 2019 presidential election. Uh, good morning, gentlemen. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, good morning, ladies. Good morning, gentlemen. How are you? It's nice to be here. Let me begin with you, Mr. Shagun Shomi, because you are at the receiving end of all of this. Uh, given the power of hindsight and you know, the verdict from the tribunal, uh, would you say that you had a watertight case? Huh. I think that um, our case was good. It was well considered. And it was presented in a manner that, all in all, it will allow the judges to do their job. That's from our own understanding of how we went about our case. It's a different thing if you ask me, how do we feel about the judgment? But in terms of the issues we were asking that the judiciary should weigh in on, we were quite clear on our mind about it, and we were very persuaded that they were good issues. We were also persuaded that given the complexities of how the structure of that particular tribunal and how the time allowed and the space and all of the issues around the ground rules of setting about that tribunal and the whole of the process, we were convinced that we laid before them a very good case. If you ask me, which you haven't asked, that how do we feel about judgment, I will go ahead to tell you that we listened through for close to nine hours, listening to every word and every pronouncement that was done in open court. 
we will wait to collect the hard copy of the judgment when they've cleaned it all out and sent to us. We will look at it, you know, professionally by a team of good lawyers who will then make uh, the necessary, um, pro you know, put the whole case again together, try and see the grounds by which they are going to the Supreme Court. But outside that uh, next uh, available route for us, I think that now we have a good opportunity also to weigh in very strongly on what we thought happened there. As far as we are concerned, and I am concerned, I think the justices of the, Supreme, of the Court of Appeal made the, they, they didn't take into cognizance some of the great opportunities that that tribunal case provided. And I'll try and give you a few very quickly. For instance, there's something called the doctrine of experience vis-a-vis -vis the doctrine of logic in law. What the doctrine of experience tries to say is that when a case is before the court, the court has an opportunity to take on a bit of a legislative responsibility to write the law and make the law clear on certain things. In that regard, we think that the handling of the lie uh, of a fundamental nature, the issue around the certificates, we think that we're not convinced and we're not happy with the way it's gone, so we'll probably be going to court on that. We also thought that there's something also known in law as forum shopping. Forum shopping would be a situation where one of the parties in the case, the Judex, one of them, has an undue advantage that has been created by either actions in the past or activities that can give them a ridiculous, a higher than normal opportunity of having the judgment to go their way. And when I say this, I say it with every sense of responsibility and decency. We are of the opinion that if you look at the activities of the Buhari presidency around the judiciary, starting from the early days when they went over to do Gestapo with the judges, underneath some kind of sting operation for anti-corruption, which we noticed that stopped almost abruptly, so we couldn't say that there was a systemic continuation of that. We read that meaning to mean that they were cowing the judiciary somewhat. And then when you go on again to look at how they went about making sure that on the heavens must fall, they must remove the CJN, not bothering on how the rules are and the procedures are. We now look at the unanimity of the judgment and the more than Delilu into this conversation. Um, Mr. Isonilo, you have heard him. Uh, your party has also issued statements, um, and as well as the president. But the statement was that you were unperturbed from the get-go. And I want to know, is this as a function of knowing that there was no case for the PDP here, or a function of knowing that it is almost impossible to prove election irregularities when it comes to the presidential elections in Nigeria. Mm. And I say this because President Muhammad Buhari has gone down this road several times. Okay, I'll tell, I'll tell you what, that question you've asked brings me to something that I need the audience and all of us to really think about. This was for Mr. Issa Onilu. Uh, I'd like to get your comment because his party said they were unperturbed from the get-go. Why, why, why would Atiku Abubakar, our candidate, why would he even bother with the process of going to court? I hold a strong view that the last time any conversation happened in court around our presidential election system was in 2011. And between 2011 to 2019, that's a good eight years. You do not have enough opportunities for the courts to weigh in on jurisprudence around the election if cases are not brought before them. And you and I are all citizens of this country. We know for a fact that we couldn't really say that our election process is so tight and that maybe there are no issues. The second reason is that when there is an election and parties are aggrieved, you can either decide to let all hell loose and allow the frameworks of your followers to get outplayed and then you have chaos in the country, or you can use the process of litigation and going to court. However laborious, however the odds are stuck against you, to ensure that you can come free now and you can have that matter adjudicated in a decent court. Then the third and most important, perhaps, is that if you do not take this case to court, if you do not allow the cases to be adjudicated upon and everybody arguing on it, 
you will not be able to shock the system into asking the top. Rise to the morning show here on the Rise News. And uh, this question is for Mr. Uh, Larry. Is, Larry. Mr. Larry Issa Nilu. And, and this is for you. I want you to explain to us, you know, your own case and how you are backing up what the judges said. Because it looks as though the PDP is going to town as regards the certificate issue, saying what the judges have said. They are not confident about that. I want you to back up this case. And I also want you to talk about the quality of the witnesses produced by the PDP. Mr. Issa Nilu on this. Thank you very much. Um, I, I'm just not perturbed by all the antics uh, PDP is throwing into uh, the fray. You could see clearly that um, I'm not a lawyer, but uh, common sense tells me that um, uh, PDP had no case at all, right from the beginning. Uh, look at all the, the, I mean, the five legs upon which they rested the case. Uh, the issue of certificate is the most ridiculous. Uh, abundantly, it is clear that in 1961, when the principal uh, of um, the uh, Katsina Provincial Secondary School was writing um, the military uh, as per the ability of our president, who was a student at that time, to pass his WAEC, he had never emphasized that in 2019, he would be standing before a court to prove his certificate. So it, it was an action that was taken on truth. Um, again, the, the, the PDP went to court to argue on the issue of certificate. And all through the period, nobody could come forward to say, Cambridge said what you presented is fake. So you cannot prove or even dismiss the paper that was tendered with the same result, the same subject, the same grades. You could not fault it at the court. Even in the public, uh, court of public opinion, you have not been able to present anything to contradict what WAEC earlier presented to the president and what Cambridge also presented and for which we stood in court to defend. Nothing to contradict it, nothing whatsoever. And again, um, even in law, law is built on logic. I said I'm not a lawyer, but I know common sense tells me that if you go to court, it is... The, the responsibility is on you, as per the way our question is it's, um, uh, uh, put in place, for you to prove the other person otherwise. You're the one that has faulted the process. And um, the issue of certificate is so ridiculous. You will know in this country, anywhere in the world, that when you lose your certificate, the next thing to do is to produce an affidavit. It is only when that has been faulted that you can be said to have... Uh, 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 have been liable to perjury. You have not been able to prove that the affidavit was uh, 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 not adequate. You have not presented anything. When you bring witness, your witness is, come, is to come. I expect them to have brought somebody from Cambridge. I expected them to have brought somebody from WAEC to say this thing that was presented is fake. They couldn't do that. So I don't know what is the basis they are looking towards to achieve anything at the court. But I must say, I also understand, as a, a, a communication planner. Uh, Mr. Isao Nilu, Mr. Isao Nilu, I also want you to talk uh, on, on the sidelines of the quality of witnesses, you know, brought. The judges just say something about the quality of witness, you know, brought by the PDP. Then after you say that, I know uh, uh, Mr. Shem Shomi would like to respond to what you have said. So talk about the quality of witnesses, the, the, the data analyst that was brought and um, other witnesses uh, by the, the PDP. sad that what PDP did was to ridicule the very opportunity they had to advance the course of uh, um, uh, jurisprudence in this country. You, you brought a witness all the way from Kenya to come and prove the existence of a server that was never in existence. In the first place, I want to challenge even so who is sitting right beside me here. If he voted, if he punched any machine to vote, if you didn't, and you voted on the paper, how would that be transmitted electronically if you didn't vote electronically? 
The only thing the machine, the card reader, even by its name, can only read you as a voter, not the vote you have uh, 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 um, um, done on that day. So it's sitting right here, it should tell us if he voted on a machine or on a ballot paper. So if you voted manually and you are expecting the results electronically, does that make sense to anybody? So, and the witness they brought to court was to come and prove all the way from Kenya, of all the um, information technology experts we have in this country, they couldn't get anyone who could point to the server and the process that produced the results they found in the server. In any case, we don't even know which of the results they presented they want to stay by because they brought several results, conflicting figures. And uh, you have figures that in some states from their record is even higher than the accredited voters for that state. So it, it, it's just ridiculous. I mean, we lost a huge opportunity to advance the cause of jurisprudence in this country. When you have the opportunity of going uh, for this kind of tribunal, presidential uh, 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 tribunal, you want to see that new things happen to, the, to, 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 to our statute book, uh, which he also has alluded to. But we missed that opportunity with the kind of uh, ridiculous um, attempt uh, of, but like I said, I understand exactly what PDP is up to. PDP un understand clearly that there's no chance in this world for it to get anything out of this. But the strategy is election is over, PDP has lost, and now the only way to sustain itself in the public uh, uh, um, um, space is to continue to just hang on to whatever they could lay their hands on. Now they will go to Supreme Court just to sustain themselves on the front pages of newspaper and to get their, their time on the electronics media. But that will be over also. So we'll see what next anti PDP will come uh, out with. But clearly, it is seen clearly by everybody. You brought five witnesses in a country as big as this, where you have over 80 million voters, and you brought five witnesses to prove that there was violence in the country. I'm from Kuala State. There was no record of any violence anywhere in Kuala State throughout our election. And we produce 100% results for APC. And if you go state by state, you will find out that if, if, if even in, in, in states that during under PDP had always been known for violence, you could not prove that in this particular one. I mean, in terms of the magnitude of violence. And what the law says is that even if there was violence, was it that enough to have changed uh, uh, the situation if there was no such violence? So which state are you going to point to that the result uh, was aided by violence? Let me give you a very important um, uh, example. Uh, the first thing Alaji Atikwa Bakal said after the result came out was that because of violence, because of the Boko Haram uh, uh, insurgency in the Northeast, there was no way Bono State could have produced that number for APC. Now, in the result that the same Alaji Atikwa Bakal and this legion of lawyers uh, who have a conspiracy to make him dry, <laughs> presented in court. The figure that Alaji Atikwa Bakal put in that is even higher than the figure that, we, that was recorded by INEC in, in that same election. So it's, it's just for, funny. But like I said, we understand clearly what PDP is doing. PDP has no reason to exist on the pages of newspaper anymore, having lost election. We should be talking of policy now. We should be talking of the project of government. We should be talking of programs of government. Just two days ago, uh, we, we, the president approved $5.3 billion for the rail line standard gauge from Ibadan to Kano. This is what we want to talk about. We want to talk about Second Niger Bridge. We want to talk, talk about infrastructure in this country. We want to talk about the state of security and the effort this government is making to ensure that the foundation for insecurity that was laid on under PDP. I, I want Mr. Shomi to respond to all of this. I want Mr. Shomi to respond to all of this you have said. Uh, Mr. Shomi, you, you have the floor. Please respond to all of this. Well, let me unbundle all of the things that my brother has said. Let's start from um, the issue of whether we have helped to expand jurisprudence. I think this, the listening to him, one becomes a whole lot more saddened that the entirety of the APC case was 
totally unknown even to their people. For instance, we were not saying that the president could not have been qualified. No. We were saying that by the route that the president chose to follow in his forms of declaration, he told the lie of a fundamental nature. We were saying by the form CFO01 of INEC, it is clearly stated there that you are expected to attach certificate. We were saying that the affidavits that President Buhari has in public space, the one in 2011, the one in 2015, and the one in 2019, are incongruous because sometimes the subjects are different, sometimes the grades are different. We were saying, and we were expecting the judges to have limited themselves to the issues that was brought before them. In what sense do I mean? Before the audience get confused. The Nigerian constitution expects that you can take about four routes to be qualified. Experience, school cert, uh, first school living certificate, and a model of others. But the law does not ex expect <laughs> that the judges who are supposed to now come and sit in court and make pronouncement on what you have deposed to in court will now leave that and now begin to go outside the fray and begin to help you import things into your case as it were, like there were the four defendant, defendants in the case, leave with, and then asking whether PDB has proved this case or not. What they needed to have answered and answered well was that did the form CFO01 have an expectation of an attachment or certificate? I make bold to say that the answer is yes. Did the president the two different affidavit on the same subject matter looking completely different and dodgy? The answer is also yes. That's that on certificate, but we'll discuss that at the Supreme Court. The other matter on security. You see, it is easy to give private interpretation to law, but it is better that you do research. The law, military jurisprudence, expects that a commander-in-chief who gives a lawful or unlawful instruction is held liable for his instruction when the troops have already acted on it. That is clear. And what does that mean in this case? What is the nexus? The nexus is that while we were trying to say, look at Lagos, look at Kano, look at Rivers. You know what the Supreme Court did? The Supreme Court went and said, oh, Buhari is not with which we should have joined the police officer, we should have joined the army. Has he, have the courts forgotten that the basis by which leaders are brought before the tribunal of international justice is to come and give account for their unlawful instruction that has caused damage? In this case, that was an instruction that was given in public space when His Excellency the President then said at that time that they should shoot and let everybody go loose on the issue of violence. And if you say you don't know where violence is, pray that you are not going to be judged on the day of judgment by your words. Because the entire country saw Lagos. The entire country saw Okota. The entire country saw Kano. The entire country saw Rivers. I can't, the entire country saw Benue. The country saw Plateau. That's rested. On the issue of whether the technical expert that was brought <laughs> was uh, qualified or not, you see, Nigerians and Nigerians, all of us together, we must get out of this our arrogant high horse of thinking that we are better than everybody else in the world and even better than people whose countries are beginning to do better than us. The Kenya that you want to poop on this matter have had a jurisprudence situation in their country where the judge and the courts of that country refused to be so cowed and allow themselves to attend an election that they thought that had created a lot of infraction. In this case, you know what the case is. The guy that was brought in was brought in to come and discuss whether there was consistency in the pattern and the numbers of the data. Anyway, the courts have ruled, we'll go to the, court of, we'll go to the Supreme Court when we read the judgment. The other one I wanted my brother to know is that when I talked about the doctrine of logic vis-a-vis -vis the doctrine of experience, I am not even sure many of the lawyers or judges in this country can even mount that argument. The argument is this, and I want to explain it clearly so that you yourself will know, the audience and my brother probably will be educated and informed. The position of very senior jurists is that 
What differentiates a judge from a lawyer when they get to the pinnacle of their profession? They hold the view that a judge has an opportunity to write judgment that will be immortal if the judgment is sound, if the judgment is good, and if the judgment improves on the position of society. Now, in this case, what one would have expected, that is if they know that by the doctrine of experience, they ought to have weighed in on that concept of giving the erroneous impression that anybody can swear anything in affidavit in a court and then say they cannot produce it and then say that you don't even need to produce it. Now, for you to know what I'm saying, do you are, are you aware that even the so-called concept of caveat emptor was not always the law? It was some sound judges in some other crimes who used their own judgment, their pen and the scribe to write government, to write society to the future. What have they done? They have given the impression that nobody needs to tell a lie. Now, if you tell a lie, it doesn't matter. If you don't have surrogate, it doesn't matter. If you tell whatever tales you like, it doesn't matter. If you have a picture of secondary school without even finishing, it doesn't matter. That you can use one million routes to go to, to, to justify your eligibility when you have already chosen the one you want to follow and the one you want to follow, you are not consistent on it. Anyway, the position of the law and the expectation of court discipline is that when the judex are arguing and bantering with their argument, they are ex the, the judges are expected to stay confined to what was presented before then. The court is not a Father Christmas. It was totally out of order, in my opinion, for the court to now convert themselves into people who will prosecute the APC case even better than their own lawyers, whereas their lawyers were quick to shut down their cases, whereas their lawyers were not interested in calling every weaknesses. Whereas the witnesses of their lawyers were balking and making their cases bad under cross-examination, the court suddenly, in a nine hours, torturous, painstaking attempt to just overdo that, which they have obviously have their reason to do, which I can tell you again, for me, it's down to forum shopping. And why do I say forum shopping? Look, the Court of Appeal has a structure. When there was a complaint about the, the, the leader of the Court of Appeal, there was a natural successor who should have been the natural person to move and become the president of that appeal. No, they sidestepped her, perhaps because they think that she's not going to do their bidding. They went elsewhere. Then they created a situation where we went into court, we argued as much as we could, we presented our case, and then they then went and then went on a very laborious journey of helping the APC to even prosecute, adjudicate, determine and weighing on their case. Look, it's not for us to shout after they have made their judgment. Ours is to say, contrary to his opinion, the People's Democratic Party of Nigeria does not need the narrative of the court process to stay relevant, to stay futuristic, to stay ready. We chose this route because between 2011 and 2019 is eight years. Eight years is a very, very long time for you not to have the cases and the issues that are thrown up in election weighed in legally. It does two things. One, it causes society to make up its mind whether there's a need for an improvement in their laws. Two, it causes the people to understand whether they can have faith in the court or it must be do or die at the polling unit. Three, it ensures that we can begin to act and behave like democratic institutions. No one can come to us now and tell us that, oh, why did we go to court? We made a bad case. Hello. We remember when they were in opposition. Thank you, Miss. Thank you very much, Mr. Shomi. Now, earlier, Mr. Issa Onilu had said that the entire uh, move to the Supreme Court can be seen as antics. And even based on the February 23, uh, 2019 election results. We know that 15 million people had voted for President Buhari, and we have a million, 11 million people who voted for Atiku Abubakar. So we have 11 million people right now watching this who are not happy with, the, with, with this current results. What would you like to say to them, knowing that they would also have to wait for another 21 days to see if there is a chance of Atiku coming out as the president of Nigeria, if this is overturned? I hope you are not suggesting that there are 11 million dump Nigerians. They are not dump. They can see clearly what is going on. They know they made attempt to vote in a particular party, and that party lost. And many of them understood clearly that they had a chance, but they couldn't make it. 
fairly in a keenly contested election in some states, and in some states, the, 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 the chances of PDP had, I mean, never existed, even have been issued. And so they have moved on. But there are these characters who continue to shift the goalpost. Now, the, what the old world knew, at least before now, until I'm hearing my brother here, telling me now that the decision had never been about the qualification of our president, but the, but the fact that he, he presented affidavit as uh, in Congress. I'm hearing that for the first time. Okay. What the old Nigerians know that PDP has been saying is that he never went to school. So we are hearing another thing now. And that's why I said, the, see, it is clear waste of time to begin to engage PDP in this kind of uh, discussion or conversation. Because they are not bringing out, they don't even deal on fact. They continue to you know, jump from you know, one place to another just co to continue to be relevant in the public space. Otherwise, you're, you're, you're talking of now that it's not about certificate anymore. It's about the fact that is a criminal matter. That is not about election. So you concede that, not that, that the president didn't win election, but you're looking for a technical way of knocking him out. Is that the point? Now, okay, now, you go to a court, the issue now is because the certain judges were compromised, our justices were compromised, and that's why this case went the way it went. We don't need, we never needed to present the number of witnesses that PDP expected us to present. Because PDP had done the job for us. Right from the beginning, it was frivolous. Very plural attempt to, 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 to pull the wool over the eyes of Nigerians. And we are not fools. So these 11 million people that you are talking about, they are not fools. It's only certain characters who benefit from, you know, to continue to do this for PDP and for whoever is bankrolling this, to continue to bring out money. Otherwise, there's no basis for whatever we are doing now. I have not seen anything from all he has said, except to say that he knows more than all the justices who were there, and that he knows more than the lawyers who were there. See, even the lawyers on the part of PDP and who stood in to represent Elijah Siku Abubakar clearly were there for business, because there's no way any lawyer will sit down and say, because somebody actually went to school, he qualified to contest election, he contested and won election, and therefore, uh, you should still take him to court and say it was not qualified. Because that's the case that we know. It is now that I'm hearing that it's not about his qualification, that he's actually qualified. Uh, but the issue is that there were the PW that were incongruous. That's very ridiculous. Well, and again, please, let me, let me, let me uh, finish. Now, again, we are, we are talking of the, the fact that the PDP uh, uh, or the lawyers are going to go to Supreme Court to go and prove the same thing. And I say it is all boiled down to the same issue of seeking relevance when you have none. You don't have any reason to remain on the front pages of newspaper, but this is the only way you can sustain that. And you have no reason to even be engaging in conversation now when a government has been formed, we have the structure fully in place, and we are rolling out policies after policies and programs after programs to reverse all the 16 years of waste of PDP. And then all we are going to be engaging in on a daily basis is this shifty argument about today is not qualified, tomorrow is qualified, but it, you should go to, 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 to the regular court to prove your crimin, criminal case, if there is any criminality in, in whatever the president has done. Now, as I said, the, the, the whole essence of this uh, case in the court was not for PDP to reverse anything, because I was not to reverse. And you are trying to prove, and I dare say, I hope I didn't hear you well, that until you brought, brought in a Kenya, you never thought there are people who are competent here. And you call that arrogance? No. I stand up anywhere, anywhere in this world to say that for what, whoever you found anywhere in the world, there is somebody in Nigeria who can do as much as that person. So if you didn't ever believe in this country, and I'm not, I'm not surprised about that, that you are now even defending that, and you call that arrogance, I will tell you it is patriotism. It is patriotism that is built on fact that you can find people. But because you were actually the one shopping, trying to escape reality, looking for somebody who will come here and browbeat us as if we are fools from Kenya, that is very insulting, very ridiculous. And I said, I understand why that happened, because there was no basis for that argument. There is nothing to prove in court. You know there is no server. You know you didn't.
Okay, uh, Mr. Larry Saunilu, I, I, I do know that Mr. Shagun Shomi would like to respond, but before you respond, because we're out of time and there are lots of grounds to cover in this conversation, uh, Mr. Larry Saunilu, if you allow me, come in here. Uh, hold on, Mr. Shagun Shomi, because there's a, lo a lot of grounds to cover. Um, Governor Wiki of River State has reiterated the fact that he is congratulating President Muhammad Buhari. In fact, he says he won at the court and that his congratulation was heartfelt. And I just want to ask you, did your party do a wide consultation before opting for that Supreme Court option? Also bearing in mind that the presidential candidate in this matter is yet to make any public statement 72 hours after that verdict. Again, the comments of His Excellency Yusun Wiki, Governor of River State, is a testament to who we are as a party. We are not a bitter, angry, unreasonable, near senseless set of people who see no good, say no good, and only act as hypocrites. That he congratulated him does not mean that he is saying he approves or accepts everything that has happened. That he congratulated him does not mean he's foreclosing the opportunity of his party and the candidate of his party to go to the Supreme Court. It is all part of a great heist to profit even when you need people to come and help you endorse your tiffery. Back to the issue, so that I can also make it clear to him. He had asked whether when people voted with their thumb, print, and paper, where was the opportunity for it to have been transmitted electronically? I believe he's unaware of what the wreck in Guinea said as to the process, and I do not have enough time to show him or explain it to him. What I would just say is this. When you bring a device and somebody puts their thumb on it, and that thumb can be recognized on that device. And that card can be recognized by that device. Where was and where is that information stored? That's that. Maybe he doesn't also know the formation of that device. It has a space there where they are supposed to immediately after election enter the votes of each of the party. That's talk for another day. Look, if you say you don't, when INEC does not have server, there's no server, there was no server, they've never had server, they don't know the meaning of the word server, when we get to the bridge of appeal, we will cross that. But I want him to understand, as a party, the People's Democratic Party of Nigeria, we operate on one fundamental principle. And that principle is that we are a party of life abundant for the majority of Nigeria. When he says that they are doing things, you just laugh at them. They have run the entire country into ridiculous debt. They are now most likely going to fail on, only on the weight of debt. They have put the people under ridiculous hardship, even as at the time that they were sent, they were being adjudged to have won, and everybody in the country is gloomy. They add more gloom to it by moving VAT from 5% to 7.2% so that they can make life more difficult for the Nigerians. At the last count, you have no idea of saying, why is it that the entire nation and even the friends of the Nigerian nation are not so hopeful of this government. We will get to policy issue when we are on policy. What we are on today is on our own take on this judgment. And I dare say again, with profound respect, no one is calling anybody any nasty name. We are explaining, and I use two funda fund foundations in law that you may check it out whether it's not something that you can reason with which is that should, a, should, the, should the judge in a case use his judgment to improve the law to the extent of public good or not? That is the doctrine of experience. It's bigger than that. We don't have enough time. Then there is a principle of forum shopping. That is a concept where you look at the way things have turned out and the way things are arrayed, and you try to build a nexus as to how did it happen like this. And I laid it very clear to you. You cowed the judiciary. You made it difficult for them to enjoy their independence, at least the vast majority of them. Some of them still try to shake it off. You went a step further to barrage the leadership of the court at the, Senate, at the Supreme Court underneath an anti-corruption drive that was so subjective. Because I guess if you had applied it to all the judges in the country and all the judges of the Supreme Court, perhaps the point would have been made that you are only fighting corruption. I say, and I'm entitled to my view, all of that your action, 
was premised on the fact that you wanted to align the situation within the Court of Appeal to favor you. They have ruled in your favor. With some weekend, one of our leaders has congratulated you. We have not removed his congratulations to you, but we only say, and I want to through you send a message to Lai Mohammed, the Minister of uh, Information of this country. I am of the view that the prior government needs to call him to order and tell him that a Minister of Information must first of all understand that the business of banter and using vexatious words on eminent personalities, list of which is not the vice president of the former vice president of the country, is wrong. And I want to say to the president directly, these are part of the issues we have. The president has not shown himself to be someone who knows how to even look at his own retinue of staff, retain the ones that are good and drop the ones that are bad. And I say without apology that in the history of Nigeria, you have never had a minister of information as lackluster, as incompetent, as failing on the job as Lai Mohammed. And why do I say that? I'll send you to another area of study. It is called the perception audit of organization. If you take a perception audit of the Nigerian nation and the Buhari presidency, I wonder what gives Lai Mohammed the right to now begin to throw pawns on us just because a, first, a court of first determination has ruled in their favor, forgetting that we still have a right to go to the Supreme Court. And also forgetting the right, forgetting that the Supreme Court, we believe, is made up of men that will also weigh in on this case. And when they weigh in, in case we even lose, we will still tell you that was the right thing to do. For the law must be settled on a lot of matters, at least for now. So the business of telling us we are talking in public space, you should applaud us. I can give you personalities in this country who would have probably been on that ballot and you would have done what you did and the process... Okay, uh, Mr. Mr. Show me, Mr. Show me, Mr. Show me, uh, let, let's just uh, calm it down. We just have to reiterate that the words you're hearing here are directly the views of the speaker, not the views of Arise News Channel. We should say that. Uh, let's look to the future as we start to wrap up this discourse. Let's talk about... Uh, the bill that was supposed to be signed before the elections, you know, the amendment bill, electoral amendment bill. What's the way forward on that? You want to comment on that, uh, Mr. Larissa or Nilu first, and afterwards, Mr. Show me you go on that. Bill, are you referring to the electoral, electoral amendment bill? Okay, now, yeah, I will go into the electoral amendment bill, but let me say clearly that the, the, the action taken by Governor Wiki and being misrepresented by my friend here ah, is, it is, is, is clear to everyone. Not everybody wants to join this bad wagon of losers and people who are just, um, uh, for whatever inordinate reasons, are pursuing Alaji Atiku Afubakar all over the place. You said clearly that 72 hours after the judgment, you have not had him come out to say exactly what his position is. Yes, that still busy convincing him how, why he should bring in more money so that they could go to the Supreme Court to continue to chase shadow. Governor Wicke said it clearly, and you cannot misrepresent that, and you are not his spokesperson, that he congratulated him because he won at the court. He didn't put any other, no, no strange attack to that. And that even some of your governors, I'm quoting him, sneak in to congratulate the president, and perhaps it's like a demonstration of the fact that we are not part of this nonsense going on, because we know it is complete nonsense. Now, on the issue of um, uh, cowering the judiciary, I, oh, I, I can imagine if they perhaps think we have forgotten all that happened in 16 years. When will PDP, for once, stand up to say, this person that has been arrested or alleged to have acted corruptly, we are also supporting that move? And the person is given the opportunity to go to court to go and defend himself. When will PDP do that? Why is it in the DNA of PDP to always quickly jump into the fray? Immediately anybody is accused of corruption. Why can't they at least give that benefit of the doubt? Allow the person to go through the process if they so much believe in the process. It, it, it is clear to us, as I said clearly, that the, 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 all this is... Okay, Mr. Onilu, I, I know you have a lot to say, but let's, let's, let's stick to the subject matter, the amendment bill. A lot of Nigerians want to know your position on it. When will it be signed? You know, it was supposed to be signed before the last election. It wasn't signed. When will it be signed? Because there are some provisions in there, like the card reader. Please hold on. You will allow me to respond to the fallacies he had put forward. 
including the commendation, because it is actually commendation. He has all, all just passed on the Minister of Information. If, it is, if, this, if PDP is this hot about the way the Minister of Information has been carrying out his duty, then we now are so happy with the Minister. That means he's doing that job very well. If they have been happy, then we would have been worried. Now, to the issue of the VAT, uh, I mean, sorry, the issue of the uh, amendment um, uh, bill to the, to, to the Electoral um, Act, I will tell you or remind you clearly that before election, there were basis for the president to have refused to assent to that bill. And one of it was this, the time the bill was bought was too close to election. Now, election is over. So we have another opportunity, and we have another um, um, uh, legislature. We have um, the, the Ninth uh, Assembly that could now go forward to, re to do the whatever they need to do and present to the president. And I can tell you clearly that it is even the president himself who made the first move for this amendment. But clearly, it, the point that was made by the president were unassailable even before he refused to assent to. So that is out of it now. Whenever that bill is presented, I can assure you that the executive arm will look closely and, I mean, see what needs to be done and ensure that the bill, that, the, that, that our process of election is improved and that by 2023, we have a better statute, electoral statute, to work on. Not the kind of one that was produced by a PDP-led National Assembly that was intended to create confusion and cause uh, a chaotic situation, which clearly we were able to avoid. For now. You can hear me. Please respond to Mr. Isa Onilu. I try every time I make a point to anchor it on knowledge, and I tell you this is the doctrine. I didn't just say, Prof. Salai Mohammed is incompetent. I anchored it on a perception audit. Go and do it, and you find out that the result is the same, but that's for another day. On the electoral act, you know, the cabal and kitchen cabinet of the president were well aware that he could not win a free, fair, credible election that was so tight with minimal human interference and that they needed to create a lacuna, a little window for themselves to go and I saw they, he held on to his pen. I hope he's able to now do justice now that that hurdle is a little bit crossed. On the issue of which has become often repeated in public space, especially by people of APC, around some imagination of monies and articles money and articles work. Look, we make and hold no apologies. We owe you no apologies that your candidate over a 30 year period cannot even grow the number of his own cattle. We make no apologies for that. We make no apologies for the fact that over and above a very distinguished service record in the custom, our candidate has been out of government since 2007 and he has continually to apply himself to business. When you work, you are likely to make profit. These are very annoying things, especially because my brother knows that we are aware of how they converted NDDC, converted CBN, converted NNPC, converted almost every organ of government into their funding equipment machine, including their state treasury. But we don't talk about that because we know that there must be a bit of honor among thieves. But for, him to, for them to always quickly say, I think who is this, we are taking this money. What kind of caca is that? We are in court because that's the place to go. The alternative is better imagined. And don't be deceived. You have not even been able to manage the crisis in the country. You don't need a political crisis that is outside the court process. Applaud us for that. We have not come to ask you to come and help us fund our process. We have painstakingly funded it by ourselves. And if one court says we have not won, we have the right to look at it and go to the next court. And if the next court says we have won, we will be doing whatever this, the rights and the privileges given to us. And if the other court says we haven't won, we will tell you, well, at least the law is settled. Anybody can do an affidavit claiming to be a medical doctor, go to the hospital and go and start injecting people because the court already said you don't need to show evidence. At least we can always tell you that to the best of his ability, 
And to the best of the ability of the Nigerian people that voted for him, we pushed it all the way to a logical conclusion. Show me one time in the course of all this, by the campaign, pre-campaign, campaign after campaign, even this, that Atika Baka makes comments that can overheat the polity. And for the comment you're saying that he hasn't made a comment in 72 hours. <laughs> Unfortunately, uh, gentlemen, we must sincerely thank you for coming on the show. We're giving you ample time to respond to these questions. However, sometimes you find uh, both of you have deviated. But thank you so much for your time on the program. We do really appreciate you and we wish you the best. I'm Adesu Amoran. I'm Rafael Yoseni. And I'm Shaita Atigari. Thank you for watching. Good.